is very famous in including, strongly, in its liberal arts education, a focus on the founders of the United States and these United States, their extensive writings, including the Federalist Papers, the Declaration of Independence, and the United States Constitution itself. Similar to the practice of the Duke Endowment, I suggest that it might be good for all of us from time to time to read out loud the Magna Carta, the Declaration of Independence, and the Constitution of the United States with all of its limited number of amendments. If we did so, I believe we'd better appreciate the role played by our founders and these founding documents in providing us with the underlying framework for the organization of our government through federalism overseen by the rule of law and a national Supreme Court, and thus providing us with exceptional liberty and economic prosperity. Now, we hope that this country, so ably founded, but with certain flaws, particularly slavery, which took decades to rectify, will last for a long time to come. Now, similarly with this college, the founders envisioned an in perpetuity institution. We do not have, however, one founding college document to read aloud here today. I went back and read Professor Charlie Lothran's fine work on the pioneering founders of the colleges. He too includes in his work several important documents about the several decades in which this college was planned until its ultimate founding. But I'd like to suggest we might be a stronger institution if we would go back and review these documents and create one uh, out of that past that might be seen as our founding document to be read on occasions like today. It would remind us all that we're part of a very special institution and community and that similar to fiduciaries, each of us has an important role to play in assuring the enduring academic and civil society, societal purposes and values upon which we're founded. So perhaps our focus on our mission is as good an approach as we might make for a singular founding document. In shorthand form, the college's mission is to educate leaders through the liberal arts for business, the profession, and public affairs. Now interestingly, some of the most relevant statements about this are in the inaugural catalog for the college for the 1946-47 year. And I just want to quote one of the statements. There is no incompatibility between an education planned for specific types of leadership and an education designed to develop a liberally informed mind. In fact, real leadership presupposes the latter. And in turn, a liberally informed mind can find no more satisfying vocation than in such leadership. So this mission guides us in deciding what it means to be a residential liberal arts college. Whom we admit to this college, each of you as students has been carefully screened uh, for admission to this college. Um, whom we hire for the college, what departments and disciplines and subfields in which we hire, how to arc articulate our general educational goals and outcomes for exceptional leaders for the 21st century. Our mission remains a founding but living mission that the Board of Trustees, the faculty, and alumni must intentionally continue to apply and reinterpret as necessary and with wisdom to evolving local, national, and global challenges and opportunities that will be confronted by our current students and our civil global societies. These students will be asked to step up to leadership roles in their time. For us to do anything less is to fail, I believe, in living and practicing the habits that we're actually teaching our students to pursue. The Board of Trustees has asked that we work on the campus this year to update our strategic plan and our master plan. The core attributes of Claremont McKenna College, a residential liberal arts college, the mission I just re uh, recounted, that we are led by academically, by an outstanding faculty of teachers and scholars, 
These are all enduring values and not to be put in question. The questions that we are to address are designed to assure that we intentionally pursue these core attributes, but with ever more excellence and effectiveness for the students whom we're educating today. For ex and for those students to be exceptional leaders during their lifetimes. So I look very much forward uh, to working with all of you, faculty, um, students, staff, alumni, and our trustees in what we have been asked to do this year. Thank you for your attention, and I'd like to move into the second part of our program, which is a recognition of those members of our community who have provided exceptionally long service. You have in your program um, a description of all of the persons who are going to be honored today for 25, 30, and up to 45 years of service. So, let me begin, and it's a pleasure to have those who are going to be honored by me on our front row. The first are the, those who are being honored for 25 years. First is Judy Pears. Um, in 1984, she joined the Claremont Consortium as a dispatcher for campus safety. She has now transitioned four years later to CMC to become the secretary for the Rose Institute of State and Local Government. And then in 1991, she accepted a position as housing coordinator in the Dean of Students Office, where she still works today.